It was America's titular tiny trucks that tackled trails and toned teeny trailers. The do-it-all pickup that was all work and all play. Commuting, hauling, bed bouncing, and off-roading. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed. The Chevy S10. The story of the S10 starts decades before it even existed. In the 1960s, Japanese automakers were making their tiny cars and slowly carving out a niche for themselves in the US market. Meanwhile, the big three were sailing on cruise control, selling millions of thirsty pony cars, big sedans, and full-size trucks. Why bother looking in the rearview mirror? Everyone else was behind them. But by the early 70s, domestic automakers were caught asleep at the wheel. Toyota and Datsun had been quietly selling a lot of compact trucks to American customers, particularly young buyers in California. The JD OEMs had found a totally new market and the big three didn't have anything to compete with them. Luckily, GM had just bought a 34% stake in a Zuzu in 1971. This was nothing a little badge engineering couldn't fix, right? Just take an existing Isuzu and call it a Chevy. In a bit of a rush, Chevy execs called up their new friends at Isuzu and asked them to start sending over the wee little pickup trucks they only sold in Japan. That would get GM into the compact truck market as quickly and economically as possible. In 1972, GM started selling the Isuzu faster as the new Chevrolet Love. They didn't call it the Love because it was adorable like me, James Love Pumphrey, even though it totally was. No, they called it the Love because Love is the acronym for Light Utility Vehicle, L-U-V. No need to make things complicated, am I right? If you only wanted to haul fairy dust instead of hay bales, Get yourself a love. Not long after that, as we know, the iron crisis came along. Gas prices were up and nobody wanted giant gas guzzlers anymore because it was too expensive to drive anywhere, which is still to this day, the number one thing people do with cars, drive them. Domestic manufacturers realized that big cars were on their way out. Selling the love for the rest of the 70s bought GM some time to develop their own compact pickup truck. It took them a while, but in the all important battle of Chevy versus Ford, they still beat Ford to the market with their own American made small truck, the all new 1982 Chevy S10. And also, it's totally confusing named brother slash sister, the GMC S15, the second coolest S15 ever made. The new truck was a simple design with clean, classic lines. It was just a tad bigger than the Love, but still significantly smaller than the full-size Chevy C10. It was modest enough to easily park while running errands around town, but it also had that handy truck bed in the back for trips to the local hardware store or to help your buddies move if you're one of those suckers who couldn't tell your friends, you know what? We don't get dinner together, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna help you move your couch. The S10 was good on gas and just plain cheap to buy. It wasn't long before they were flying off the dealer lots. In their first year, S10s were offered in just one two-wheel drive body style. And it was powered by either an 80 horsepower four-cylinder or 110 horsepower V6. They quickly added an extended cab model and InstaTrack four-wheel drive in 83, followed by a four-cylinder diesel option in 84, four-wheel drive and diesel, now that's a truck. <laughs> Eventually, Pontiac's 2.5 liter Iron Duke four banger replaced the smaller engines while the V6 got a few more ponies. But as John Connor pointed out to the Terminator, he could probably run faster than an S10. In 1988, the 4.3 liter Vortec V6 showed up and gave the S10 a much needed boost to 160 hertz That was a lot. 
at the time. It's a very exciting engine. Don't be a V8 guy or a V6 guy. Be a motor guy. In 1989, a V6 that was super reliable and powerful was cool. On top of the options like a short or long bed, a sunroof, and a fancy digital dash, GM offered a bunch of different appearance packages. There was the rugged looking backcountry edition. Hey guys, what's a tough look for our truck? How about the backcountry edition? Backcountry edition? Yeah, that sounds tough as hell. Yeah, I agree, it sounds tough as hell. Yeah, I think it sounds tough as hell as well. Yeah, I agree. Well, that does it. Backcountry edition sounds tough as hell. And then it went to market and everyone was like, that sounds like a bunch of cowboys f***ing each other. <laughs> the body kitted Top Gun and Cameo editions and the awesome four-wheel drive Baja edition. Available only in white, red, or black with some major red decals. The Baja wasn't all show, it was also muy go. <laughs> it had real, functional, 4x4 stuff like a roll bar, a front brush guard with off-road lights, a tubular rear bumper, underbody skid plates, and a sweet off-road suspension setup. This was so cool, it lasted almost 10 years, until 1991 when GM gave their mini truck twins a minor refresh. With new grills, side moldings, and they changed the GMC's name to the GMC Sonoma. Now I know this is the Chevy S10 video, but you can't talk about the S10 without mentioning the GMC Cyclone. <laughs> For some reason, GM didn't see fit to combine the Chevy badge with the turbo, probably because they didn't want anything else on Chevy dealer lots that was as fast as a Corvette. So that same year, they launched the fastest stock pickup truck in the world at the time, the Cyclone. It had low compression pistons in the Vortec V6 and an intercooled turbo. These all wheel drive little black beauties made 280. God bless Tersperse. Thank you, Jesus. But what's more impressive is they went from zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds. To put that into perspective, the Lamborghini Urus goes from zero to 60 in 2.9 in 2018. 28 years later, for a gajillion dollars more. It's a f***ing truck that cost no money in 1990 that went zero to 60 in four point whatever. This is fast and very special. It was so cool that car and driver put it up against a Ferrari 348 in a drag race and the Cyclone won. Hell yeah, America. Now you could haul your horse food faster than the horse. But you could only haul 500 pounds of horse food because GM gave the Cyclone a much lower payload rating than the standard S10 in Sonoma. The GMC brand was intended to be the sportier side of Chevy. So the Cyclone also had a dropped ride height, low profile tires, and came with a warning label on the sun visor not to take it off road. It was built for urban cowboys and was never meant to be practical. Enthusiasts loved it, but the quick compact truck category didn't really catch on. Fewer than 3,000 were sold, and today the Cyclone is a cult classic. If you didn't have the bread for the top of the line Cyclone, you could still get a slice of the action with a two wheel drive, naturally aspirated, nothing to sneeze at, 195 horsepower Sonoma GT, but they only sold 806 of those. That's whack. On top of being a popular choice in its niche market, the S10 was also the perfect platform for a newer offshoot of lowrider culture, mini trucking. I mean, what else would you call it? From traditional tiny spoke wheels and hydraulic suspensions to dancing truck beds, wild paint graphics and meta religious airbrush tailgate murals, Car enthusiasts had a new outlet to display their creativity. Lowrider culture and mini truck culture deserve multiple episodes and we'll spend much more time on them in the future. Stay tuned. Smash that sub button and the bell to keep up to date on Donut.
anyway. Well, the 80s and early 90s came and went. And after 12 long years, the second generation S10 and Sonoma finally debuted in 1994. The updated truck was a bit bigger and had more rounded edges, but it had more powerful engines and a more comfortable interior. They brought out a step side model. The extended cab got a third door for easier access. And in 2001, a five passenger four door crew cab became available. All the special editions from the 80s disappeared like Ali Sheedy and were replaced with new options. There was the ZR2 package for off-roaders and there was an all new trim level that they made up brand new called the SS. It was high performance. It didn't work out, so they replaced it with the extreme models. It wasn't nearly as extreme as the turbocharged Cyclone, but it still had a lowered sports suspension and 16 inch alloy wheels. You might be surprised to hear this, but there's one version of the S10 that's actually one of Chevy's rarest models. So just after GM launched the EV1 electric car in 1996, they popped a detuned version of its electric drivetrain into 492 short box regular cab S10s. The 1997 S10 EV was front wheel drive and had lead acid batteries good for up to an astonishing 45 miles. In 98, the batteries were upgraded, which saved a few pounds and bumped its range up to 75 miles. Like the EV1, all the S10 EVs were originally leased out for fleet use. But unlike the EV1, not all of the trucks were recalled or crushed. At the end of the original lease term, 60 of the S10 EVs were spared from the jaws of the junkyard and were sold to the fleet owner. Keep your eyes peeled for one of these super rare Chevys parked next to an electric outlet. As Y2K came and went, the S10 sales slowed. Gas wasn't that expensive and new engine technology meant big trucks were getting good at sipping the juice instead of guzzling it. The auto industry was changing and if something new wasn't bigger, then it wasn't better. In 2004, GM stopped production of the Chevy S10 and GMC Sonoma compact trucks for the American market. They were replaced by mid-sized twins, the Colorado in the Canyon. Today, you might see an S10 lifted on big tars, grappling with sand, mud, rocks. You might see one sitting flat on the ground with its wheels tucked under its fenders, a custom lowrider on airbag suspension. And you might see one with an LSV8 roasting rubber at the drag strip or on a drift night. You can't buy a new Chevy S10 in the US anymore, but the S10 love is alive. And well, thanks for watching Up to Speed. If you aren't subscribed to Donut, how did you even see this video? Hit that button down there and hit the bell so you get an email or a text or whatever. I don't know how this shit works. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. If you are a fan of Donut and want to buy a shirt, go to shop.donut.media. We have other videos that you might like. I love you.